while Grant tries to trick Lee by not attacking Richmond and instead attacking Petersburg. We'll see how that goes this week. Fucking Butler fucks it up. Hey, hello, and welcome to Civil War in Hindsight. I'm Lieutenant Tommy. With me, as always, is Prospector Johnny. And Johnny, this week, it's full of staring at each other, lots of casualties, and movement on a lot of the fronts, and trickery. Oh. So, I mean, it's... A, it's oh, a, it's, there we go. So that's fun. Something yeah. new, something different, something... They're trying something. Somebody something different. Is. Yep, 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 yep. That's good. Uh, it's going to open up on the 10th of June. Uh, Forrest, 9th and Bedford Force, is going to attack federal forces underneath Samuel Sturgis near Bryce's crossword, Crossroads. Excuse me. Bryce's forces are exhausted. Our Sturgis forces are exhausted. They've marched a lot. It's super freaking hot, and they're not prepared to attack or be attacked by Cav. Super hot. And they turn tail and run because they don't want any part of that. So this is pretty much... A prime example of how to successfully use Cav by Nathan Bedford Forrest. Good on him, I guess, but it's just going to drag this war out longer. Um, Forrest is going to capture 1,500 men, multiple pieces of artillery, and 176 wagons full of supplies. Poof. Uh-oh. That's and not... That's like... So that doubled their supply stock, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, like, <laughs> like, that's like... That's like their supplies for the last year, yeah. Double their food re reserves. And Holy Sturgis crap. is basically in full-on route back to Memphis. Hmm. Now, uh, on the uh, 11th, the uh, um, Morgan's Raiders are going to enter Cynthiana, Kentucky. Cynthiana, Kentucky. It's a weird name for a city, but sure. Uh, Sheridan's going to attempt to get his... Woman? What? It's just a woman. It's like That's it's all. like Cynthia, but then like they made Anna after it to make it like it's like an Indiana kind of thing, or a... so it's like it's like Cynthia, uh, Cynthia Anna. It's like Cynthia Anna, but yeah. mashed together. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Weird city. If you live there, give us a like, or say you live there. They'd... It still exists. What? It's got a population of like 1,300? What? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, Sheridan's going to attempt to get his Union forces to join Hunter, Sheridan's uh, Union calf. So think of Nathan Bedford Forrest, but a boy in blue version of him. Okay. He's going to try to join Hunter's Raiders near uh, Charlottesville. He is going to run into Confederates underneath Wade Hampton and Fitzhugh Lee. Uh, forces underneath Custer, which is underneath... Sheridan. They're going to actually successfully get behind the Confederates, causing mass casualties, uh, putting them in kind of a panicky run. Uh, and Fitzhugh Lee is going to be pushed back as well as um, as Hampton. So successful there by the nightfall, although Hampton and Fitzhugh Lee are going to start entrenching that night. So it's a victory, but we didn't break through and haven't met Hunter and yet. So it's uh, hmm. so like a moral victory. Uh, it's a, a moral technical, victory. A technical victory. Sure, technically we, we won, but... Yeah, well, what, do, what do we get, really? While all that's going on, Hunter's actually going to go into Lexington and raid into Lexington, including burning down the Virginia Military Institute. So take that, you college students that kicked our ass a few weeks ago. Now you don't have a school. Yeah, I don't know. they'll rebuild it. I'm sure they had insurance for this sort of thing. Or, But they don't have it right now, Johnny. Yeah, that's we right. Made They're going to have to have class homeless. outside. I mean, if, if we burn their dorms, they're homeless, right? I don't know it's if you burn the dorms the, or not. I know the, you burn. It's military, just camp. Like, what? Yeah, well, all right, fair enough. It's yeah. just, isn't that a class anyway? Like, the class survival, is how to set up a tent. wilderness survival? Yeah, probably. Like, how to, how to exist in, like, when you're out and about? Yeah. <laughs> Busy day on the 12th, Johnny. Uh, Sherman is just making attempt. them stronger, Tommy. That's all we're doing. <laughs> Sherman it's a is bad gonna... move. Sherman is going to attempt to dislodge Confederates at Trevilian Station. His multiple attempts are unsuccessful, and now he has to find a new path to Hunter. So, yay, victory, and then immediate loss, because that's what this yeah. war is all about. No good follow-ups. Yeah, you know, anytime you start to feel good about something, you got to take get kicked in the teeth. Uh, meanwhile, in Kentucky, after after Morgan captured several hundred troops in Cynthiana, he's actually hit by federal forces like the regular troops, and he gets his ass kicked mm. real bad, and he's in complete run for his life to Abington, Virginia. Huh. So, yeah. uh, take that, Morgan. It's, uh, yeah, it's weird when you happen to fight a real army. What happens? Yeah, instead of instead just of unarmed of civilians marching, home guard, bank robbers, civilian. you yeah. bunch of yeah. punks. 
Over on Grant's front, Johnny, at nightfall, he decides to move his entire army of the Potomac, 100,000 man army, in secret across the James River. So now his target is no longer Richmond, he's going after Petersburg. He's going to move his forces south, go across the river in secret. He is going to keep is it Warren's. Why? Just, just to change court target? Just no, they're flying to movement. Um, so up until this okay. point, the, the, Richmond anymore? The, the goal has been Richmond. And then now Grant's goal that he's been given by Lincoln is destroy Lee's army at all costs. So Lee's not really, or Grant's not really too terribly concerned about Richmond itself as much as let's knock Lee out of the war. Okay. Knock the biggest army out of Virginia. Virginia's the heart of the Confederacy. You end the war is kind of his. Yeah, his sure. Yeah, we've hopes. thought that about a dozen times. Yeah, we did. Uh, um, places we've taken over. Remember New Orleans? Yeah, get yeah. that. Yeah, Break we did. Break off all their shit, you know. Yeah, still going on. Yeah, and take the Mississippi. Yeah, we did that like yeah, a year no, ago. Yep, didn't matter. Still, war still going on. Yeah, Mm-mm. yeah. Yeah, these folks really want to keep their slaves. They really do, Johnny. Uh, he is going to leave Warren's corps behind to cover the passage of the army, uh, and by doing this, he's also going to have Warren continue skirmishing Lee to make Lee think that we're still trying to go to Richmond. That's the plan. Okay. On the morning of the uh, 13th, Johnny, Lee is completely surprised. He fully thinks that Grant's army is still in Cold Harbor, but they are not in Cold Harbor. Got him. (laughs) Ha ha. Sucker. As he's waking up, eating his flapjack, he looks across the field and goes, there's significantly less tents (laughs) over there. There's significantly less. Oh, shit, the army's gone. So he's in full-fledged panic trying to figure out where they're going. So he's actually going to move his army southward. Uh, uh, towards to try to block off the road to Richmond through the Malvern Hill and White Oak Swamp. Not at all where Grant's going. Yeah, he's just, he's he's just guessing that's, that's what... Yeah. yeah, he's taking a guess that they're trying to get into Richmond, and this is the sneaky way in, I assume. Yeah, so he's building up a new, new defense position around Malvern Hill and White Oak Swamp. Grant, however, isn't going in those directions. He's going down by Petersburg. Uh, Grant orders Meade to sink debris in the James River and to block the river as much as he can, uh, and they form a massive pontoon bridge that's constructed to move the army across. Sherman finally moves his men in a skirmish position against Johnson at Burnt Hickory, so we finally got Sherman not just sitting there staring, too, so yep. we, fu- we got movement. We're doing things. It's better than last week. Uh, there we go. We're, yeah, set it into motion, and now let's win this freaking war and end it because it's hot. I'm it's done. hot. I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm tired. <sighs> Can't not it sounded fun when we started least. this, but it is not fun anymore. Did it? Uh, it, well, it did for me when I was younger. <laughs> Five years ago. Free <laughs> getting <laughs> artillery shrapnel on my neck. Yep. Uh, it, it, and now it just... But it, it was going to be three months. Yeah. Just hot. I was going to watch the start and end of it. Yep. Well, you went, yeah, you went out to, yeah, you went to the first. Yeah, you did. Yeah, and, you got uh, a souvenir. Yeah, that was supposed to be it, and it was not. Instead, I have PTSD, and I uh, <laughs> you know, wake up screaming in terror sometimes. Uh, Johnny on the 14th, Grant's army is crossing the James River. Unbeknownst to Lee, they start their whole crossing. Additionally, W.F. Smith's 18 Corps travels through the waterway on the James River down to meet up with Burnside. Uh, at the Bermuda Bermuda Hundred, with the orders to attack Petersburg, Federal forces continue to keep Lee busy with skirmishing up north of the James River. Continue to keep Lee tied up and convinced wholeheartedly that Grant is moving towards Richmond. On Sherman front, Johnny, a Union artillery shell. Uh, while the Confederate high brass of Johnson's troops are all meeting uh, in a meeting house, mm-hmm. uh, they look look across the battlefield and they notice Union artillery pointing at them. They go, maybe we should disperse a little bit. But a little bit too late because one of those artillery rounds lands amongst their men killing Lieutenant General Polk. Unfortunately, that's the only Confederate general that we get. The other ones are all okay, Um, but we do... Hey! We get one! That's... Well, it got a Lieutenant General. It's a a pretty high-ranking general. I mean, not the head of the the Confederates. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, do better. Fire, do better. Fire yeah. a couple artilleries, you know. Shoot, shoot some more rounds, do a little bit better. Yeah, I get what, you. What are we doing I get here? You. On the 15th, Johnny, we have the attack of Petersburg, which fails because Butler is 100% completely and totally inept and needs to be removed from friggin' command 
at this Yeah, but point. then replaced with who? I don't know, Johnny. He's stupid. Look, look. So he out, I mean, like, we sent him down there to take Petersburg a month ago. Can't do it. You know, Gets his ass kicked by no. Beauregard. Retreats back to the Bermuda 100 line. And so now the the Bermuda 100 line is a Confederate line of trenches that he can't get past, right? At this point, at that Bermuda 100 line, Johnny, Beauregard only has 3,000 troops in Petersburg. Butler was reinforced with the 18th Corps. He now has 16,000 men. There is no way in hell's green earth that Beauregard could have done anything against 16,000 men if they pushed in force. But due to poor maps, bad orders, lack of rations in the right place, and just pure stupidity, nothing happens. We just we just sit there and fuck around all day long and don't assault people. I think it's no way on God's green earth or no way in hell. I think you kind of blended your idioms there. That's fine. It doesn't matter. It does. It's, it's <coughs> hell's green earth. I like hell's green. No, no. You know what? I like it. Hell's green earth. I like it. Okay. I like it. Sure. Sure. Uh, Johnny, uh, the federal house in Congress uh, is going to vote 95 to 66 to end slavery. Unfortunately that's for us, that's closer than it should be. That's not two thirds majority, so we got to try it again. Mm. Go back to the drawing board, rewrite it. Uh, and the they, end of the they week, they need to say uh, we're going to win in slavery, except for you guys. That's, yeah, of course, Congress can keep them. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, as long as as long as a government in some way, shape, or form is able is able to continue to sl- you know, enslave people and have cheap or nearly free labor, as long as we can find a loophole for that, I'm sure they'll be okay. Yeah, ending you just gotta wait. Slavery. Yeah, write that loophole into the law, and we'll be good to yeah. go. Uh, yeah, Johnny, well, the week is going to yeah, end prison. on the fifteenth. Make, make, make prison slave labor. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's do that. yeah, great idea. Yeah. Let's let's te- telegraph that to Lincoln. Be like, hey, why don't you just like. Be like, slavery is okay if they get arrested for something. Uh, yeah, if they're a criminal, if it's a punishment, <clears throat> then you can use them Make as them slave work. labor. Yep. Uh, Johnny, the week's going to end on the 15th. Uh, Beauregard is going to weaken his Bermuda 100 line to just 1,000 men, pull the rest of his troops to Petersburg, giving him about 14,000 men in Petersburg. Uh, Burnside's 9th Corps is going to arrive uh, across the James River at about 10 a.m., Warren's 5th by midnight. Federals begin to assault Redans and trenches around Petersburg, taking multiple Redans and multiple trenches. What's a uh, Redan? Redan's ba- a small fort. Okay, it's like a redoubt, like a, it's like, like a, a makeshift type. Yeah, fort it's or, it's not like a but, big, it's not like a big multi-walled, you know, massive. Like it's not Fort Sumner, mm-hmm. but it's like a okay. barricade, trenches, big emplacements, artillery yeah. pieces, like an that kind out, of, yeah. outpost. Yes, yeah, it's like an outpost. Yeah, thing. yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, uh, Butler is actually going to be able to take the Bermuda 100 trenches uh, from the Confederates and then immediately lose them when Lee sends two divisions to reoccupy them, including Pickett's, who Pickett then takes the trenches back by 6 p.m. So, fucking Butler! Hmm. Last little note I got here, Johnny. Uh, some slight positives. Uh, Sherman is going to advance on Johnson's left, pushing Johnson to new lines at Mud Creek. Once again, Johnson turns to sail and runs to a new defensive position, doesn't actually face in force against Sherman. It's kind of what he's been doing for the last two months, three months, a month and a half, something like that. Yeah, last little bit. That's it for this week in Civil War in Hindsight. If you enjoy Civil War in Hindsight, check out Historic Hindsight. We do all kinds of fun stuff. We talk about, uh, you know, random events throughout history that you may have learned about, may not have learned about. We talk about the Whiskey Rebellion, which is one of my personal favorite idioms in history that doesn't you know, get, get talked about a lot. We have an upcoming uh, episode that hasn't aired yet about uh, the Bay of Pigs fiasco. So, uh, so check us out.